Hey everyone, the pattern I'm going to be tying for you today is a stupid simple pheasant tail. This is a Pat Weiss pattern. Uh, it's become a staple of mine uh, in my box over the last couple years. It's a pattern that I turn to anytime I come across low crystal clear water. Um, it just seems to really work in those types of conditions. So let's go ahead and put a hook in the vise for you. We'll spin one up and then I'll tell you a little bit about it at the end. So the hook I have in the vise is a Hannock 480. It's in a size 20. I tie these in 16s, 18s, and 20s. The 480 20 size 20, it really represents a true size 18. I like it because it has a really wide gap. The bead we have is a copper 2.3 mil bead. Um, I tend to use this 90% of the time it's on my dropper. The thread we're using is a brown Vivas 16-aught. I like 16-aught uh, Vivas anytime I'm tying really small flies. It just has a really, it's a small diameter and you can spin it and flatten it out, which I really like. So you can see when I put the thread behind the bead, I didn't build this big thread dam. You see a lot of people say you need to do that. I don't like doing that. I, I think it builds a lot of unnecessary bulk in the fly and you can always seat the bead at the end of the fly. You don't need to do it at the beginning. Tailing fiber, we're gonna be using Coke de Leon. Uh, this is a medium pardo. I like using about three or four fibers. We're gonna have the tail about a hook shank in length. Now, the way I like to put the tail on, I'm gonna put the tailing fibers at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna spin the thread counterclockwise. It's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna flatten it. And two, you can see it jumps back and we can just grab the tail. And with a turn and a half, you can see <clears throat> it sets the tailing fibers on top of the hook shank. And we're just gonna grab them and we're just gonna, with flat thread, go ahead and advance the thread down the hook. And you can see those fibers are just sitting on there really nicely, right on top. Go ahead and cut the excess off here. Now, you can see I actually turn the hook in the vise towards the camera. Anytime you let go of the thread to grab tools or whatever on your, uh, on your fly tying vent bench, um, when you drop the thread, you should always turn the hook away because you don't want the thread to nick the point of the fly. Uh, you know, it's either can fray the, the thread or worst case, uh, it can actually break it. And that's such a pain. So just make sure you get in the habit of turning that hook away from you every time you drop the thread. So let's spin that thread counterclockwise. And with flat thread, we're going to go one, two, Three turns, you see we're right behind the bead again. We didn't add a bunch of bulk. We're keeping, we're not at, we're not doing this big thread base that a lot of people say, you just don't need to do that. We're gonna keep our fly very, very thin. The wire ribbing, uh, we're gonna be using copper in extra small. This is a UTC ultra wire. So once again, you want to spin that thread counterclockwise, stick the wire in the slot of the bead, and we can capture it. Now, I like taking the wire down the side of the hook shank face, facing me. A lot of people like to put it on top. I personally like to have it on the side. Now, I don't know if the camera captured it, but... When I take the wire down the hook shank, I don't take it all the way down to where the first thread base was. The reason I don't do that, you wanna leave a little space at the end because when we put our pheasant tail on, then we counter rib it with the wire. If you take it all the way to the end, this wire will grab the tail and sometimes it cocks it off to the side. It's a real pain. So make sure you just take it just short of the thread. So the secret sauce of this fly is right here. This is Nature Spirit Bleached Pheasant Tail. I pull off two fibers. You can pull off three, but I see tons of tutorials that say take off four, five, and six fibers. 
that's just too much. You don't need to do that. It just makes the fly too bulky. I personally like two fibers, especially on these small flies. I'll cut off the top quarter. Pheasant tail is very brittle, uh, especially the tip. So when you tie it in by the tip, um, if you use a little bit, if you go down from the tips, you're going to get into a thicker part of the pheasant tail, and it's just going to be a little bit more durable. Now we're going to go ahead and grab that, and we're going to pull the pheasant tail just behind the bead, and with flat thread, go ahead and advance it up. And you can see that bead is already seated just by the couple times we've gone up and down. So what I like to do now, this is a trick I got from Lance Egan. I take a little brushable super glue, or in this case, it's Loctite. And I'm just gonna touch the top of the pheasant tail right there with the super glue. It just makes the fly much more durable. Now we're gonna grab it and we're gonna spin it and we're just gonna make sure, we're gonna take our time and just make sure each turn is in front of the last turn. And when I get to the end, which is right there, I'm just gonna spin it one more time around just for good measure. Go ahead and capture it. A little difficult with the camera there. I like to stop with the pheasant tail on top. Go ahead and cut it off. Now we're gonna counter rib it. The first turn, I go around the thread, right at the base, two, three, four, five, stop at the top. We're gonna go one, two behind the wire, one, two in front. Go ahead and helicopter it off. And like I do all my flies, I take a little brushable super glue. I don't like a lot of whip finishes. I just don't think you need to do it. This is, uh, makes it nice and durable like this. One wrap, and then we're gonna go one, two whip finishes, and it's done. Right there. And there is your stupid, simple pheasant tail right there. Super easy pattern. So I reached out to Pat Weiss, and Pat was gracious enough to get back with me, um, and I asked him why did he come up with this fly, and he said he wanted a fly that didn't have a lot of flash, didn't have uh, any hot collar. Uh, he didn't want colors on it that a trout might refuse, and he wanted just an out-of-the-ordinary shade, uh, especially a lighter shade. And you know, I've heard George Daniel say before that we can't force feed trout what we want them to eat. We got to give them what they want to eat. And that's the great mystery as fly fishermen. We're always trying to solve what does the trout want to eat. So when you're out on the stream and you're encountering those, encountering those really tough conditions, low, clear water, put a stupid, simple pheasant tail on because you might find out that that's what the trout want to eat that day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, once again, tight lines, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.